Barn me, bow, soldiers, fur. Roll in and stamp out that hunger. Feeling fresh, tasty value. That's how we roll. Rolled. Fast, fresh Vietnamese. Order yours today in store, online, or download the Rolled app. We've got Scotty Lysett, though. We speak to him every Thursday, thanks to McGain Real Estate. Sold by McGain again. He was in rare form last week. Oh, Rich. one-handed marks. Yes, kicking Kicks goals around, the, around body. the body. 21 yeah. disposals, 26 hit-outs. He was doing it all. Coaches' votes. And I turned on a family member last week, Roach. I was doing the game How? with Malcolm Blight. Yes. The big man had taken the mark on the left half-forward flank, member side, northern end of Adelaide Oval. Then he turned on the angle. Mm. Took his time, it, yeah, deep breath. Blight, he said he's doing everything right. I, I said he will not even score. Oh, and he you, put it you, through the middle. <laughs> you you said what? I did, and I apologise, Scott. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, mate. I think you might have to doubt me a few more times because I keep putting them through when you do that, I think. <laughs> now, Scott, I, I have not seen a better technique from even the game's greatest goal kickers. You took your time, deep breaths, measured it up. How could anyone think you weren't going to kick it? Well, I don't think why they would. I mean, just because you're over 200 centimetres doesn't mean um, you can't kick a footy. But <laughs> anyway, I do practice that, that uh, shot a lot and um, as, as well as everything else. So I was pretty confident as long as I took my time and went mm. through my routine that I could put it through. And luckily I did. I, I do feel bad, Scotty, because I had the inside running after the the few misses you had at Norlunga. You said you'd put a lot of work into your kicking. And I, I said that during the call to Blighty. I thought that maybe you overthought it a little bit there for a while, but, gee, you flushed it. Yeah, well, look, I think uh, that was just uh, trial game form that was, mate, so I'll just save myself for the real stuff. Love it. Now, Scott, if you were to cut the highlight and could only show one bit of it, the mark or the kick, which would you keep? Oh, I think I'd kick the kick the goal every time, I think. Yes. That's uh, more important than a mark, six points and on the board, but... Uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah, it'd be nice to get another one of them this weekend. Mm. Yeah, well, hey, against we, your old mob, yeah. Yeah, and we heard from Nick Natanui earlier in the week. He said he was looking forward coming up against you. You've been watching a few tapes? Yeah, I think uh, everyone that goes up against Nick Nat tries to do as much study as they can on him and see where they can get him or uh, how they can try and nullify his influence because obviously he's um, you know, one of the greats and really hard to stop when he's up and going. So if you're not prepared then uh, you're in, in some strife, I think. So, yep. yeah, we've been work, doing a lot of work this week, that's for but sure. But you'd know more so, than most yeah, others, though, wouldn't you? You would have been doing a lot of work against him when you were with the West Coast Eagles. What What is the secret? Because he has such he's so big, but he has such an incredible leap, and he's good at ground level as well. Yeah, look, there's, you know, I think a lot of people would like to know the secret on how to beat Nick Matt, but it's, you can go in with a plan, but just because you have a plan doesn't mean you can pull it off. Yeah. So, um you know, obviously, yeah, he's great um, with his follow-up work, and I think that's a strength of myself as well. And I'm going to have to try and match him in that area because I think, you know, he's been having a lot of clearances the last few weeks. So I'm going to have to try and, um, you know, at least match him or half half the contest there. But um, yeah, it's just I think the the thing with Nick Nat is, you know, he wants you to keep doing the same thing, and you know, he's so smart and and so experienced that if you keep going in and doing the same thing against mm. him, then he's going to figure out how to beat you. So uh, I'm going to have to change a few things up and and see how I go. Scott, do you mind if I give you a tip? Cool. Yeah, yeah, go Here for it. Go. Don't repeat. <laughs> do not repeat Riley O'Brien's tactic of putting your notes on the phone. Oh, I've had a lot of people uh, mention that to me as well, so I don't think I'll be making the same mistake he made because, <laughs> um, yeah, that didn't really work out for him. I think West Coast won that day. but Yeah, they did. Well, yeah. Adam, Adam, got I got a new phone out of Twitter. it. You got a new I don't phone. have Twitter, thank God, so I won't be doing that. <laughs> hey, look, uh, it's always a big game when you take on the West Coast Eagles. It gets underway at 7.40 mm. on uh, Saturday night. Looks like Connor Rosie will be back. He'd be jumping out of his skin. Yeah, he trained today. Um, we had an uh, afternoon session today, and he looked just like he always has, you know, very zippy and agile and um, eager to get back out there. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, Rose take the field and um, hopefully – Give the defenders at West Coast a few nightmares because um, he's looking in good form, just like he was down no longer in the, in the practice games. Easy question for you. Are you in the Georgiades camp or the Marshall camp? Oh, I'm in both. <laughs> I'm in both. I think um, they're obviously two different players, but they, they bring so much to the team. And, um, yeah, I love playing with both of those guys. You can I can see there's 
a big future at the club for both of them. So I'm excited to play with both of them at some stage. And, uh, you know, if it's one or the other, it doesn't really matter because they both they can both in, impact the game in their own way. And, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Do you think they can both play in the team at the same time, along with yourself, along with Peter Adams yeah, and along Charles with Charlie Adams. Dixon? I think they can, yeah. I think, um, you know, teams are playing really tall this year and um, there's less stoppages and the game's quicker. So if we can get, you know, the ball in quicker to one-on-ones and we have tall players um, that, that can run. I think the thing with those two guys is they're both really fit as well. So, um, you know, can, they can run up and down the ground and they can both, um, you know, provide a contest, which is what we need. So um, I think they can both play in the same team, but whether that's to be seen, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Scott, Dan Houston did a press conference today and he pointed out each time he has played against West Coast, it's been different tactics to work to different themes against West Coast. How much time have you put into them more so than put into your own game this week? No, I think most weeks we go in and we try and think about, or we try and focus on our strengths. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we can't lose sight. You know, West Coast are a great team and, um, you know, they're really good around the stoppages and they have a lot of strengths. But I think we can't lose sight of what makes us good as well. You know, like we're a good team, like a hard team that runs hard it gets to as many contests as we can. And usually, you know, we, we pride ourselves in the stoppages as well. So um, I think as soon as you start changing the way you go about it and getting dictated to, that's, I think, when you can get come undone. So I think there's a reason, you know, why we think we're a good team and we've got to back ourselves in as well and not just, just focus on them. Scott, you don't do the draw. So you didn't choose Adelaide for the two pre-season games. You didn't choose North Melbourne. You didn't choose Essendon for the first two home and away games. But do you need this West Coast result to actually send a statement to everyone who's saying, well, they've just had easy games so far, Port Adelaide? Oh, I, I think we, you know, we think we're a good team. And obviously anyone that goes over to West Coast in, in Perth and, and beats them over there on their own deck is a good team, you know. So uh, I think if we can go over there and get the four points, I think p- people will definitely stop saying that, you know, we've only played a couple of, you know, teams that might be lower on the ladder this year. But, you know, we finished, we played in the prelim last year as well, you know, so we, mm. we know we're, we're a good team. And um, to be, I guess, well, for everyone else to figure out that we're a good team this year, we, we do have to go over there and get four points. And, um, you know, we're focusing on this week, but then we've got Richmond again the next week. So I guess the next two weeks are really big games for us and we'll see where we're really at. Come on, Roach, you were kicked from the grand final last year. Hey, but we you've heard to... it. Everyone's saying, well, who have you beaten, Paul? I, I, I think it's been a good preparation. It's a long season, so they're building nicely. Uh, so too is Zachy Butters. We spoke to him Monday. Ooh. Has he been a serial, serial pest <laughs> this week after 36 touches and probably three votes in the brown though? Oh, mate, he's been walking around like a pigeon all week. <laughs> he's uh, had the chest out and... Uh, but so he should. Jeez, he had a game on the weekend, didn't he? Uh, did he ever? How much upside has he got? I know we're pumping him up a lot, but uh, he he just looks like he really enjoys playing footy. Yeah, I think you know, I, I think for people to watch the game and and you know you can see a lot closer to them, um, you know what some players can on the screen. Just the excitement that is on his face, you know, and, mm. and how much he's invested. You know, that's what I, I, when I see him out in the field and he's done something really well or he gets around you for doing something well, it's just, you can see the look on his face and it's genuine, um, you know, excitement and passion. And I think that's what you love to see in a young player, you know, that's what gives you the lift, you know, as one of, as myself as one of the older players, seeing a young guy like that who's dominating and that cares so much about the team and about, about other players, it's just, you know, makes you want to play with him and play better. And, yeah, just love playing with him. It's good. Only been a couple of games, but what's the banter around the club now in terms of the medical sub? Like, we know going mm. back in 13 and 14, I think it was, or 14 and 15 when the, the, the green vest was there, people hated it. It was the dreaded vest. Uh, how do people talk about it within the club now? Yeah, I don't think... Well, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. But in, in the past, it was mm. um, the dreaded sub and stuff like that. I remember it used to be called... Well, Andrew Gaff back in the day when I was at West Coast he used to get called Kermit because he was yeah. wearing oh. the green stuff all the time. So that was a good nickname for him. But yeah, I think at the moment players aren't viewing it the same. I think they're, you know, just especially with our team at the moment, you know, we've got some pretty good depth. So, you know, if you're that sub, you know, you know you're close to getting the game. So um, I don't think the players at the club are taking it as a bad thing. I think, you know, if they're, if they're the sub, they're thinking, I'm on chance to play still, you know. So, mm. um, it's definitely 
a positive thing for us and um, you know, you still could be a part of the team whether someone gets injured or not. So it's it's a positive in a way. Scott, is it back to the what we knew as the old normal of travelling on commercial flights, travelling the day before, all that for this weekend? Yeah, things are back to normal as far as I know. Um, so we'll go over there tomorrow afternoon and we'll get in there uh, a bit later at night and then mm. have to wait around all day on the Saturday to play Saturday night. So the 7.40 time slot's always a bit bit boring because you've got to sit around all day and just twiddle your thumbs in the hotel room or try and go for about five coffees during the day and <laughs> get ready for the game. So it's uh, I'll find something to do because I know a lot of people in Perth, but yeah, it can get a bit boring, those night games for sure. So, so there's nothing structured there? So perfect world, you'd rather a uh, an afternoon game so you can get it played and then get on the kite and get out of there. But do, do you have not, not have team meetings during the day or not? Or is it just normally before the game? Yeah, usually you get all your prep done during the week and um, the day before we'll have all our um, final meetings with Ken and, and as in a line, so in mid back forwards. And uh, the day of the game, so tomorrow or on Saturday before the night game, we'll just um, go for a walk jog as a team. So we'll probably spend about an hour together and then it's just basically doing your own preparation, you know. So whether you just got to figure out what's best for you and, and make sure you're ready to go. So... Um, it's easier for us older guys, but for the young guys, you know, you've got to find your routine and, and work out what's best for you. Well, little Zachy said on Monday he loves the away trips because he gets a free breakfast and doesn't have to cook it. So uh, he's happy. Uh, we, yeah. wish, <laughs> we wish you all the best, uh, Scotty. It's going to be a cracking game. Looking forward to it. Some wonderful footy on this weekend. Gets underway 7.40 over in Perth at Perth Stadium uh, against the West Coast Eagles. Travel safely. And happy Easter, Scott. Yeah, yes. Yeah, happy Easter, guys. Bring it on. Thanks. Eat a... I was going to say a swear word then. Eat a lot of chocolate. (laughs) (laughs) Glad you checked yourself. I forgot where I was, Roach. (laughs) There he is, Scotty Lyson. All thanks to McGain Real Estate. That's why everywhere you go, there is a sign popping up saying, sold by McGain again. They're a wonderful organisation, Roach. That would have been... Can open, worms Worms everywhere. everywhere. Shovel a lot of chocolate into you. There you go. It's not folklore, it's fact that country footy brings local communities and its people together. Visit countryfootyscores.com.au. Delivered by Red Energy and TAC. Get your country footy fix and all the latest results at countryfootyscores.com.au.